who began the preaching mission of the Krishna consciousness movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in these western countries in the year 1965 and paved the way for the dissemination of the message of Krishna Bhakti throughout the world. So my unlimited Dandavat pranams to him, his lotus feet. And then I offer my equal Dandavat pranams and my flower offerings of faith of my heart to the lotus feet 
of my beloved Siksha Guru, instructing spiritual master, who we are very fortunate to be in the presence of, the, the divine presence of this evening, His Divine Grace, Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata Shri Srila, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Also, my Thunderbhat Pranams to my other Siksha Guru, Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad, Shishila Bhakti Rakshak, Sridhar Goswami Maharaj. And to all of the Rupanuga Guru Varga, that is our disciplic succession of spiritual masters, coming down for 500 years from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the great avatar of Sri Krishna in this Kali Yuga. So, and my respects and my pranams to all the glorious souls who are here this evening, all the glorious uh, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, friends, and guests. So, it is a very, very joyful moment for us that once again, our beloved spiritual master, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, has come and blessed uh, this temple, this location, and this city of Los Angeles, this state of California, and this western country, United States. We are very uh, overjoyed that we have this opportunity to be in His Divine Presence one more time. He has come here to this location uh, about four times previously, over a period of 15 years. And we remember his first visit here to America in 1996. Actually, he made it very clear to all on his first Western preaching tour out of India. He made it very clear that he had come to these Western countries uh, for the purpose of worshipping the holy places where his beloved friend and Siksha Guru, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the founder of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, where he had come previously and where he had walked and where he had preached. So it just so happens that this location here on the banks of the Pacific Ocean in Venice, California, happens to be the place where our Srila Prabhupada used to come for his morning walks. And many of those conversations were recorded and some books produced from the discussions at that time. So when we were here in 1996 with our Gurudev Srila Narayan Maharaj, he also came to the same place and walked there and worshipped that holy place where the lotus feet of Prabhupada had touched. And then he graced us all by remembering, reminding us of the holy pastimes of Srila uh, uh, Haridas Thakur, a great, great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, who uh, was brought to the banks of the ocean in India, in Jagannath Puri, India. And all of the pastimes that took place at that time, his auspicious disappearance from this world. So our Gurudev spoke about that at that time. And on his preaching tour here in the Western world, he specified that he had come because he was requested personally at the time when our Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, was leaving this world in 1977. And he called our Srila Narayan Maharaj to his bedside and he had some request for him. One of them was that he desired that because of the intimate spiritual relationship that he has with Prabhupada, uh, he wanted that he would be the personality who would perform the final burial rites, which are called samadhi, of a great divine realized, God realized soul. So that ceremony was personally performed by our Srila Narayan Maharaj in complete obedience to the desire of our Srila Prabhupada, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. And also, at the time of his passing away, he uh, requested Srila Narayan Maharaj to please help all of his 
disciples that he had made because Prabhupada had traveled throughout the globe for a period of 12 years and established over 108 uh, Krishna temples, Hare Krishna temples throughout the world and he had some uh, 8,000 disciples. So many of them were very new to this pathway, to the spiritual path in life and especially to the bhakti path. And Srila Prabhupada had written so many books, very deep literatures, the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the crest jewel and the complete um, essence of all the Vedic literatures, the Puranas, the Mahabharata, the four Vedas, all of these are completed in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is called the Granta Raj, that means the king of all scriptures. So. He, com he tried to complete that literature and he worked his whole lifetime to give that to the Western world in the English language. And he also completed the great biographical literature on the life and teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu titled Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, which was produced in a 17 volume work. And many other books he also gave. But he understood that his disciples had not had sufficient training and sufficient time uh, and they needed more completion of their understanding of the Vaishnava and especially the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. So therefore at that time he requested Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj to please help his disciples after his disappearance. And Srila Narayan Maharaj took this order on his head very reverentially and promised that he would do until his final breath. So we can say now that since 1996, when Srila Narayan Maharaj first came out of India, for 15 years he has traveled extensively throughout the whole world to all the major countries of the world and he has gone on 30 world tours even though he is uh, elderly in age just like our Prabhupada was. But out of his mercy and his compassion for all the souls of this world, to give the message of divine love of God, Krishna Prem, in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he has taught that all the jiva souls, all the living entities in this world can be benedicted if they hear the chanting of the holy names of God and they perform this process in their lives, their hearts can be purified and they can attain transcendental love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna. So he took it upon himself to tour the length and breadth of this world and now at the completion of 15 years he has given this Krishna consciousness to tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people throughout the entire world. And we are so happy that even though he is in his old age, that he still takes it upon himself to come here. He just completed a few days ago a one-week festival in the hills of California here in a small little town called Badger, just east of Fresno and Visalia. And about uh, 800 to 1,000 devotees came there for the whole week and he gave the most beautiful, wonderful uh, speeches and lectures on these uh, sweet subject matters of Sri Krishna, his life within this world, how he uh, performed his transcendental activities, his leelas, his pastimes. This is the essence of all the teachings of the Vedas. So our beloved Gurudev, uh, he is actually giving the teachings of Lord Chaitanya to the world also through literatures and books. You will see that we have outside many of the books that he has written, nearly 100 books he has written in his life and translated also from the Vedic literatures. And to this very old age he is still continuing this process tirelessly so that he can leave this legacy of these great scriptures that are coming down from the disciples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the most important literatures on the science of Bhakti Yoga that exists in the world today and they were never before available in the English language. So he is making them available, authorized versions with commentaries by a God-realized personality. So there are so many contributions that our Gurudev has made. He has changed the lives of thousands of people throughout the world and very compassionately he sees each and every soul as a divine part and parcel of the Supreme Lord 
and he treats them with all respect, love, and affection, and simply desires to benefit them in their lives. So on this auspicious occasion, this evening, we have one opportunity to hear from directly from the lotus mouth of a transcendental pure devotee of Krishna who has spent his entire life uh, preaching the message of Krishna Bhakti, practicing it, and realizing all the deepest truths of Vedic knowledge. So I, on behalf of the temple management here, on, on behalf of all the devotees, and on behalf of this whole city of Los Angeles, we want to welcome our Gurudev with love and affection and devotion in our hearts. Thank you so much for coming to you today. In the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Bhikshu Gurudev, Nichalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pada Stotra Satsri Srimad, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Shikshu Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pada Stotra Satsri Srimad, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our disciplic succession and all the assembled devotees. So, uh, Sri Pai Padmanabha Maharaj spoke very beautifully about one angle of Srila Gurudev's coming to this world and his purpose. And I'll also speak from another angle. It's stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, E kupe brahmanda bomite konya bhagya vana Guru Krishna Prashade Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. The living entities, that is, we spirit souls, have been wandering throughout 8,400,000 species of life in the chain of karma, action and reaction, transmigration, in different universes, in different species. When, after many millions of births of performing sufficient sukritis or spiritual pious activities, either knowingly or unknowingly, one gets to meet a bona fide spiritual master. Lord Krishna himself, God himself, personally makes that arrangement. Bhakti stu bhagavata bhakti sanjena parijayate sat sanga labhyate punbir sukritai pura sanskritai After many millions of births of pious activities, one gets the association of pure devotees. And by the association of pure devotees, one has the opportunity to become a pure devotee. From that pure devotee, like Srila Prabhupada and now his successor, Srila Gurudev, one uh, gets the Bhakti Lata Beach, or the seed of devotional service. Already, the seed, we ourselves, our spirit souls, are in seedling form. That is, just like an uh, almond has, if you press it, almond oil inside. A seed that's properly watered with sunlight gets nourished and fructifies. So we have the seed of a particular relationship with Krishna within our hearts. As a friend, or as a beloved, or as a parent. All the relationships here in this world are merely perverted reflections of our relationship with the Supreme Lord. So at the time of meeting and getting the mercy of Sri Guru, 
particularly at the time of initiation, that seed becomes sprouted and by the environment created by Sri Guru. It's called Bhakti Lata Beach. Externally manifest as Shraddha or faith that if I simply engage in Krishna's service, then all my subsidiary activities and desires are automatically fulfilled just as by watering the root of the tree all the leaves and the branches become watered or by putting foodstuffs in the stomach all the other organs of the body are nourished so this uh, seed of bhakti, the bhakti lata beach and the sprouting environment of that seed is given by Sri Guru who makes the disciple the gardener and gives him the water of his harikata his beautiful discussions or narrations about the Lord's qualities, activities, pastimes and also gives him the seed of chanting the pure holy name of Krishna which gives ultimately the association with Krishna in any of those beautiful relationships. First, that seed sprouts into two leaves and those two leaves are being given all good qualities like humility, mercy, equality towards all, freedom from false ego, honoring others, not desiring any honor for myself, and freedom from all bad qualities like lust, anger, greed, pride, illusion and envy, all those qualities that give us so much pain. And then the next two leaves sprout. One being the rarity of tasting bhakti which makes the pleasure of impersonal liberation or merging with the identity of the Lord and losing our individuality and imagining that God also is not an individual person a philosophy which permeates insipidly the entire western world and therefore the pranam mantra of our Gurudev Srila Prabhupada is nirvashesha shunyavadi paschitya deshatarani he's come to uh, purify the western world of its uh, very poisonous philosophy of voidism and impersonalism and Srila Gurudev is his successor in that regard so the second, the third leaf is that tasting the happiness of Krishna consciousness which is all auspicious for all living beings makes the happiness of impersonal liberation as tiny as the water contained in the imprint of the calf in the mud and it's so very very rare this bhakti is very very rare out of millions and millions of men, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, hardly one strives for perfection. And out of millions of those who strive for perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. And out of many, many millions of spiritualists, one may become a devotee of Lord Narayan. And out of millions of those, hardly one is a devotee of Krishna. And out of those, so, so rare that even Brahma and Lakshmi and Narad does not attain this very, very high, high epitome or pinnacle of devotion that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, which is the maid service of Srimati Radhika, which is the highest uh, opportunity that the living entity can have. So this is also given by Sri Guru. And then the final two leaves, that one tastes the unlimited happiness of serving directly in the Lord's pastimes, in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, which are predominated by Sri Radha himself, 
who Krishna himself in his highest feature is the servant of that Sri Radha. And then that bhakti, that fifth and sixth leaf, it not only attracts Krishna, but it enchants Krishna and makes Krishna astonished. Sri Guru has come to give this divine love to all of us. So we're very, very fortunate that because he knows the moods and the mind and the heart and has conquered the mind and heart of Radha and Krishna themselves, he can also know all the minds and hearts and souls of all living beings. Just like an expert gardener can look at any seed of any plant or tree and say exactly what that plant will look like, how many flowers and leaves, what kind of fruits. So similarly, a pure devotee of the caliber of Srila Gurudev can look in the souls of not only his disciples or not only all of us here in the room, but every living entity and see that living entity's spiritual perfected body and at the same time make that soul a pure devotee of Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. So he gives us the actual purpose of our, of our existence and the purpose of our being created by Krishna in the first place. So we cannot estimate at all the great fortune that we have of being at the lotus feet of Srila Gurudev tonight to hear his powerful Harikata which completely destroys all ignorance, all miseries, the ocean of material grief, and gives us the path of pure bhakti. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksura Nalitandiyena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Namaam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vinanta Swami Niti Namane Namaam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Srimad Bhakti Vinanta Narayan Niti Namane First of all I want to offer my most humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Diksha Guru, Paramaradya Parampujapad, Sri Srimad, Ethi Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. And then again, I want to offer my most humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Diksha, Siksha and Sanyas Guru, Parampujapad, Sri Srimad, Bhaktivedanta, Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And then I would like to offer my respectful obeisances unto all of the Sanyasi Gan and to all of the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis and guests who have come here today, my Dandavat Pranams. So, that song we sang at the beginning, Sri Guru Charana Padma, that the feet of the Guru, they are like Padma, lotus, hmm? and they emanate Sri, Shri means pure bhakti. It is a nectar, it is a honey which comes from the lotus feet of the Sadguru. And therefore the lotus feet of the Guru are compared to Padma, lotus flower. In Ayurveda, if someone has some eye disease, then they will collect the honey uh, Padma Madhu, the honey which comes only from the lotus flower of Sri uh, of the lotus, and that honey will be applied to the eye, and it will cure the eye disease so that one can see again. So the Sri, the nectar, the honey, the Madhu, which emanates from the lotus feet of Sri Guru, this also acts as a purification for the eyes. The eyes of vision or the transcendental vision that one needs in order to understand pure Krishna Bhakti comes by the mercy of Sri Guru. Therefore, we worship Sri Guru because he is broadcasting Prema Bhakti Jahahoite. He broadcasts Prema from his body. 
He broadcasts prema from his lips. When he speaks, when he acts, just by his divine presence, the prema bhakti is being broadcast everywhere. And everyone who comes into association with such a personality can have their transcendental vision restored and can have the feeling, they can, one can accept the feelings or the moods of the pure devotee. The pure devotee, the sad guru, he is always in association with the transcendental realm. He comes, he descends from the transcendental realm, he manifests his presence in this transcendental realm, and he always remains eternally connected with the transcendental spiritual realm, the Loka Vrindavan. There in Goloka, the eternal pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna uh, and their transcendental amorous sports are always going on eternally. There Sri Guru in his transcendental spiritual form is always engaged in assisting the Supreme Personality of Godhead in those transcendental pastimes. Therefore, he understands intimately the moods of the inhabitants of Braj. When the spiritual master, the Sad Guru of this category, the Sri Guru, speaks, when he broadcasts the transcendental pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna from the spiritual world, the moods of the inhabitants of Braj, the moods of Srimati Radhika, the moods of Sri Krishna, the moods of these transcendental personalities emanate from his body, emanate from his lotus lips emanate from his heart and those moods can touch us and they can change our life forever. <laughs> so therefore, when we come in the association of such a personality, uh, because Bhakti, Bhakta and Bhagavan, these three things, they descend from the spiritual world. So when we come in association with such a personality, this is our only opportunity to get some connection with the transcendental realm and the opportunity to purify ourselves of all of the accumulated dust Cheto Dharpanam Arjanam Bahava Mahadavagni Nirvarpanam that our consciousness can be cleansed of millions and millions of births of contamination by our association with the material modes of nature and with our material desires with lust, anger, greed, etc. So all of this can be cleansed from the mirror of our mind by the process of associating with Sadhguru and hearing the transcendental sound vibration emanating from his lips. And in this way, our consciousness becomes cleansed. And by taking shelter of that person, becoming Anugatya. Anugatya means to be under the guidance of the Sadhguru. Understanding that Attaining spiritual perfection can never be done by ourselves. We can never attain to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna or attain the service of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and the divine couple without the mercy of such a Sadhguru. Therefore, we should understand that everything that happens to us in our spiritual life is completely and totally dependent on His mercy. It is by His mercy our eyes are open. It is by His mercy that the flower of Prima Bhakti will open within our heart. It is by His mercy that we can make any advancement in spiritual life at all. And therefore, it is said uh, that Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra, or all the Shastras declare three times that association with the Sadhu is the most important thing. Uh, Ekalava, at just one eleventh of a second's association with such a sadhu, one eleventh of a second can bring all spiritual perfection. Therefore, we are very fortunate tonight to have the association of such a personality who very rarely appears in this world and very rarely takes the opportunity to travel everywhere and deliver this great message of the moods of the transcendental activities and pastimes of the inhabitants in Braj, so freely distributing them to each and every one of us. Therefore, 
taking the opportunity to hear the transcendental sound vibration from the lotus lips of the sadhus. You have all come here today to hear from Srila Gurudev, and we are all very blessed to be in his association, and we thank him very much for coming here today. So of course, first of all I offer my pranams to Sri Gurudev, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, ladies and gentlemen. So maybe for many of you, maybe your first contact with Krishna consciousness. So maybe my five minutes explain Krishna consciousness for new persons, also I am new also. What has Gurudev come to give us? Very, very simple thing. It describes Krishna, Surya, Sama, Haya, Maya, Andika, Jaha, Krishna, Jaha, Hoiti, Nahi, Maya, Adika. Krishna is like the spiritual sun. Just like when you face the sun, there's no shadow, no darkness. But as soon as you turn your face away from the sun, immediately, what's the first thing you see? Darkness, your own shadow. Then in this world, the soul has forgotten Krishna. Very simple. The soul is a spiritual entity. He does not belong in this material world. Then what has caused the spirit soul to come to this world of birth, death, old age, and disease? Krishna Bodhi Sejiva Anadi Bhairmukha Atayiva Maya Taradeya Samsaradi Dukha. We have forgotten Krishna. Therefore, we have given up our real relationship with God, Jehovah, Bhagawan, Parameshwara, Supreme Lord, whatever you may call him, we have forgotten him and we are making relationships with this world and this world is temporary. Therefore we attach ourselves to something and when it disappears we must suffer. Therefore Sri the Gurudev has come with a, not his own message, Gurudev is not independent also. He has come with a message of the Supreme Lord himself and his own spiritual master. What is that? Remember Krishna, become happy. Very easy to remember Him by constantly chanting His name, by constantly hearing about Him, then the mind will become absorbed in thoughts of Him. By hearing of Krishna's names, His forms, His activities, then again that relationship becomes established. And when our relationship with God becomes established, then we can start to think about developing love for Him. So I want to tell a small analogy. This was told by one disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. He said one day there was one dung beetle. You know? So, whole life, what did he know? Cow dung. Just like us, what do we know? This bag of, this also cow dung. What is this body? Bag of stool and urine. We have this cow, this dung beetle, he didn't know anything else. But one day, by good fortune, he made friends with a bumblebee. So that bumblebee was talking to the dung beetle and he said, My dear friend, come with me. There's a lotus flower. And in that lotus flower you can drink nectar, you can drink honey. So the dung beetle had no experience. What's a lotus flower? What's honey? But somehow by good fortune he developed a little bit of friendship, a little bit of faith in that bumblebee. So the bumblebee took him on his back and carried him to the lotus flower. He put him on the lotus flower and said, You stay here and I will come back at night time. So the dung beetle imagined a whole life drinking cow dung. And the first time he is drinking honey, completely happy and intoxicated. <laughs> he became so absorbed in drinking that honey, he forgot everything. My cow pad back home, <laughs> my friends, my family. Only he was drinking that nectar. So the night came and that lotus flower closed and inside was the dung beetle. He was very, very happy. It just so happened in that district was one queen. So she had made a vow every day for this month, I will offer 108 lotus flowers to the feet of Sri Krishna. Therefore she sent her servants out and they were picking the lotus flowers and inside the lotus flowers, our friend, Mr. Damanam the dung beetle. <laughs> so they came and the 
queen was offering those flowers to the Lord one by one. Sri Krishna Namaha, Sri Krishna Namaha, Sri Krishna Namaha. And inside our dung beetle, he was also offered to the Lord. Then what is offered to Krishna is very, very sacred. Why do we worship Srila Gurudev? Because he has completely offered himself to Sri Krishna, no other reason. That things which Krishna accepts become very pure and powerful. So, those things which are offered to Krishna, we do not throw in the garbage. We throw in a holy place like ocean or river. So the queen, she ordered her servants to take all the prashadi remnants, all these flowers that are offered to Krishna, and throw them in the river Ganga. So our dung beetle, you know, remember like in the World War II, U-boat movies? It was going under, the water was coming up, and the dung beetle was giving up his life. But that dung beetle was very, very happy. He was thinking, today such good fortune came to me. Today I drank nectar. Today I was offered at the feet of Krishna. And today I am leaving my body in the holy river Ganga. All this good fortune came to me. Why? Just because I made friends with the honeybee. Therefore Gurudev is such a honeybee. What is he distributing? Not ordinary things in this world, material enjoyment or raw food diets or freedom from disease. He is not offering mystic perfections. He is not offering even liberation. What is offering that very highest thing? What is that? Service to Sri Krishna. And he is giving it freely. That person who is fortunate, he takes. And that person who is unfortunate, he does not take. Therefore, we are getting a chance now. Gurudev, we are all dung beetles, myself included. So we are hoping that you can also give us some honey from Galog Vrindavan. Go First of all, I pay my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Paramarad Guru Pad Padma, Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasat, Sishimad Bhakti Vedanta Slavaman Gosai Maharaj, and Om Vishnu Pad, Puribraja Gachar Javarja, Asto Tarasat, Sishimad Bhakti Vedanta Slavaman Gosai Maharaj. I pay my obeisances, the lotus feet of my spiritual grandsire, Nittalila Krishna Vishnu Pad, Sla Bhakti Pragyanta Sab Goswami Maharaj, and Nittabila Prashtam Vishnupad, Sla Bhakti Vedanta Sami Maharaj. I came out of the senses of Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. We assembled here to listen Harikatha from the Lotus League of Sinma Srila Gurudev, headed by Tridandi Sarnasis. As before you have heard, from different different angles, from different devotees. So all we have come to listen to Srila Gurudev. When Srila Gurudev came first time in Western country, Srila Gurudev told, my mission is that my Siksha Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Sami Maharaj, in a very short time, he established so many preaching centers, top of the mountain, middle of the ocean, so many places. So why I shall come here, Srila Gurudev told, then Gurudev replied himself, that I came to touch the feet dust of my spiritual master. Wherever he put his feet, that is pilgrimage place for me. So not only for Gurudev, this is pilgrimage for, for all of us who have some faith in God. Second one Gurudev told, the final journey of Srila Bhaktan Sami Maharaj, he called Srila Gurudev from Mathura, his mod to Vrindavan. And he requested him, I brought so many devotees, could not train them properly, please help them. Gurudev promised, I shall do that. 
So Gurudev told, I have to fulfill my spiritual grandmaster's desire, so I came to help all devotees, whoever initiated by him or not, but I helped them. And moreover, Gurudev came to preach the mission of his own spiritual master and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Few days before when in Bajar, then Gurudev asked different devotees, why you call me here? One devotee told, and I remember also, Srila so Gurudev told, as before in beginning, Srila so Bhaktivedanta Sai Maharaj came in this world to tell you of all that Krishna is Supreme Personality Godhead. Srila so Gurudev told, I came to tell you to forget that Krishna is Supreme Personality Godhead. All the audience became surprised. Then Gurudev must smiling replied, We have to remember Krishna is your friend, your son, and your most beloved. I remember this thing, so they came in this world to tell this message. Moreover, in this world, everyone wants to be happy, no one wants sufferings. So if you want to really happiness, then what you have to do? What Srila Gurudev instruct us, you have to follow completely. If you follow Gurudev's instruction, then suffer and other sufferings and other bad qualities will not come in, I, inside us and eternally will be happy and one day we will attain the abode of Krishna. Like Srila Gurudev, under guidance of Srila Guru, his Gurudev and our Guru Parampara, he is serving Sri Mahaprabhu and Divine Kapil. So what will be the result? We follow him. For them, the ultimate goal, Yad Dattva Nanivartanti Taddhama Paramam Mama. Gai Haya, we have not to return in this world again for sufferings in material world. This material world is not permanent address for us. This material world only for suffering and sorrows. What to say about human beings? Even when Marjada Prasad of Lord come in this world, He showed us that this material world full of miseries. He did so in nice pastimes. Even in eternal connoisseur kidnapped by demon Ravan and the big fighting took place and he took Sita Devi and back to Ajadha. After that he had to again give up Sita Devi forever. Why? To please the human beings. But they never be happy. Because this material world not for happiness. Even Lord Krishna came and showed that so many enemies, so many demons are there. But all the demons inside our mind so if you want to get rid of this and want to be real happiness, then to follow Gurudev totally and fully and solely. Hare Krishna. Bancha Kalupakadu Bhaskya Kupa Sindhu Bhaya Vache Patitana Mutavana Bhaya Vache Hare Bhaya Vache Vegur Changaya Radika Taralaya Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namon Dhyana Timarandasya Dhananjana Svataya Chakshu Mitam Jena Taj Maya Sri Gurai Namaha Pancha Kapa Trubhyas Chakri Pasindhi Vyavi Chapatita Nam Pane Vyo Vaishna Guru Vyo Namon Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nithai Gora Primanandi So, first of all, I'd like to offer my Dhanavat system pronouns millions of times in the speed of my Dixiburi Naj, Dikili, Prabhisham, Ashtu, Tarazat, Tashish, Maishila, Bhakti, Ranti, Swami, Prabhupada, an equal number of system Dhanavat pronouns at the Lord's Street by my Shikshan, Sanyas, Gurudev, Om Vishnu, Pad, Ashtu, Tarazat, Tashish, Maishila, Bhakti, Ranti, and Ryan Goswami Naj. To all the Acharyas in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis guests, headed by the Tandandi, Tridandi Sanyasis tonight. <clears throat> We're very fortunate to be here. We've heard this many times. 
We're very fortunate to be in the human form of life. After so many different transmigrations through other species, higher planets, lower planets, when this is very close, this repetition of birth and death, samsara, re reincarnation, it's very close to ending in material existence, we come in contact with such a personality. What do we all share in common? We're all looking for happiness, pleasure, ananda, love, at every moment, not just temporarily. But in this world there is only temporary pleasure and so much suffering. Ananda maya sat. We're searching for that which is eternal satisfaction. But we're identifying with this material world to our absor absorption in that which is not real and temporary. So we're very fortunate we had many different opportunities and different options of what to do tonight. But we've come to hear from a sadhu, a spiritually elevated personality. A personality who is not from this world. The bumblebee who has come from a very sweet place to share with us that nectar. We don't want to be in this place. My spiritual master said it's like a storeroom. An outhouse. We should do our business and get out of it. What is our business? Our business has been realized this very moment, coming in contact with such a personality, hearing from that personality about our real existence, performing activities not to bind ourselves in this material temporary existence, but to elevate ourselves away from suffering and to our eternal association with a divine couple, Nityananda Mahaprabhu. So how do we hear from such a personality? We give him our hearts. Not that we let that sound vibration exit through the other ear, but we draw it down into our hearts. We forget about our temporary material responsibilities and different venues that we have. Such an opportunity is not... The vibration that comes from such a person's mouth is not material vibration, it's spiritual sound vibration. It will penetrate our darkened existence. Our soul is sleeping. This sound vibration is like an alarm clock. Let us not push snooze so that we sleep through it. <laughs> Allow ourselves to awaken from our forgetfulness of our eternality. Instead we are so absorbed in this negative mundane existence captivated by the so-called pleasures that just seems to slip through our hand when we acc accumulate something material. I thought I was going to be happy. All the advertisements said that everyone else is happy when they obtain this. <laughs> I was in the mall today and I was looking at everyone shopping around, looking for this happiness. Convinced that after you get one material thing, one more material thing, they'll attain that pleasure. But it, it's very temporary and it ends what appears to be like nectar in the beginning, but it ends in so much anxiety. So this is a different subject matter that we're discussing tonight. Austerity is the wealth of the spiritually realized persons. We, we forego a little bit of inconvenience for the material immediate sense gratification and we perform spiritual activities. And what seems like difficulty in the beginning will be so much pleasurable in the end. So this fortune is very so great, especially when that personality speaks about the transcendental realm of the Sri Vrindavan Dham, the highest spiritual existence. Where only every walk, every step is a, is a dance and every, every word is a song. We would want to be there. We're meant to be there. And we have another option given to us tonight. And we're so fortunate to be here. Thank you very much for all coming. And take this deep into your very self. We want happiness and pleasure, love. So this will be offered through this transcendental knowledge, transcendental explanation of the transcendental activities of this divine couple and Nityananda Mahaprabhu. The divine couple manifested in one form 500 years ago to teach the process in this age. 
chanting the Lord's holy names. Every scripture of the world re recommends singing God's names. They're all equally beneficial, but very powerful is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Hare. First I'm offering my respect for one then what pronounced the Lord's feet of my spiritual master is divine grace. AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada. The same among the devices is the Lord's feet of my son Yasin Siksha Guru, his divine grace, Shiva Bhaktivedanta Naim Raj. All our exalted guests, Sri Bhaktivedanta and Yasi uh, John here on the stage. And welcome to Shishi Radha Govinda's temple. So, Shraddha or faith is the beginning of devotional service. So that Shraddha or faith is established in the hearts by association with the Satguru. There are two types of Mahapurushas or Siddha Purushas. One is of the uh, in personal nature, the Siddha Mahapurushas have no uh, relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So therefore they cannot establish faith in your heart in the Personality of Godhead. So by their association, real spiritual advancement cannot take place. And unfortunately most of the Siddha Purushas for exalted personalities who come to the Western world to speak about God are of this nature. So it is very rare an opportunity where we have an association of a Siddha Mahaparush, a Mahabhadvat, who can establish that Shraddha in the hearts of the conditioned living beings. And by that Shraddha, the devotional service begins to grow just like a seed turns into a sprout, that sprout turns into a plant and begins to progress more and more. So this is bhakti of devotional service, which such great personalities instruct the living beings. And it is said, Savai Pam Sokaro Dharma Yuto Bhakti Yadoshri Ahaitri Apartiyata Yinatma Shupashi's key. That in the exalted literatures of the world, particularly Shivan Bhagavatam, the crowning glory of Vedic literatures, it is said that this devotional service can lead to the perfection of the human form of life. Devotional service means really Glorifying the personality of Godhead. Godhead, God is head and he's a person, a supreme, absolute, uh, exalted, sublime personality. Not that God is without a form, without a personality, without qualities. This is uh, knowledge which comes down to us through this Parampara Pacific succession. Therefore, the love of God means the love of that Supreme Person and Krishna establishes himself in the Bhagavad Gita as that same Supreme Divine Person. So, devotional service bhakti means service to that Supreme Person. And it is also said, Ektavani Lokishmin, Kumsum Dharma Parasvita, Bhakti Yoga Bhavati Tannam Ganahami Bhi. That all these principles of devotional service, which is the prime most which gives immediate fruits, and that is the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So this specific mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare, is established in the heart of living beings. When one comes before the spiritual master and takes initiation, that mantra is given uh, freely. One doesn't have to pay for the mantra. It is the grace of the Lord by, that, by which that mantra comes to the mouth of the Siddha Purusha into our ears. So that devotional service can become more and more exalted up to the level of Mahabhav or transcendental ecstasy 
which we see in the personality of Srimati Radharani is a form of presentation of that highest ecstasy. So in that highest ecstasy, the Vipalamba Bhav or the feeling of separation even in the presence of the Lord is manifested in Srimati Radharani. So even though she may be sitting at the lap of the Supreme Personality, see Krishna, she feels separation. So that is the, the mood which Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited in his pastimes on this earth and which we will also have to feel and bear because uh, those who may not know, this is actually the last appearance of His Divine Grace in California, in Los Angeles. He has been traveling, as we have said, years, up to 50 years around the globe, twice a year. Now he has told us that now he wants to return and stay in India, and from there he can preach Krishna consciousness, and those of us who are eager for Krishna Bhakti come there, can come there and see him. So we are forced to feel this service and separation uh, due to the desire of His Divine Grace. And he was here, as Padmana Maharaj mentioned, four, three other times. And when he first came, he asked everyone to please try to help this temple. So Gurudev will be here, he will go from here to Italy, but we have also to bear the expense and continuation of this temple. So we are also asking everyone here to try, as Shiva Gurudev mentioned, to support this temple. We can come here and hear from devotees, but we also have to help monetarily. So any of those of you who have some leftover mon uh, lottery funds that you haven't spent, <laughs> this would be a very good service to continue this project. Because if there was 200 people here and everyone gave $1,000, that would actually cover all of our expenses, which we have meant to keep on us on track. So please consider this. And also consider all the literature that Shri Gurudev has written, which we have on tables out here, if you want to really connect to him, you have to understand what he has said. He has written all these literatures, particularly for all of us to read. So thank you very much for coming. And um, please consider that this association with Sri Gurudev is the most rare opportunity.